Okay, we're getting close to the numbers we were expecting, so I'll just get started in a minute. Again, if you have any questions, please put them into the question window, and that would be great. Okay, well I'm going to get started. I want to thank everybody for joining us on a nice sunny uh, July afternoon in Ontario anyway, depending on where you're calling in from. Uh, my name is Rob Triggs. I'm the Vice President of Sales and what we call our Lead Sales Effectiveness Advisor for our company. And uh, I'm really happy that you've decided to spend some time with us today. We're going to take you through um, a bit of a presentation on how you can leverage CRM to grow sales. Specifically, we're going to talk about marketing automation, and we've invited uh, Jesse from Click Dimensions, and I'll introduce her more appropriately in a, in a minute, and uh, we're going to take you through that. But before we jump into Click Dimensions, I just want to set the scene a little bit here. So some of you that are on the phone I know already have Microsoft Dynamics CRM, and you're using it today to do various things. You're using it to manage your sales and marketing people. You're using it to um, take care of your customers um, as far as customer support goes and lots of other different things. But today we're going to focus really on how do we grow sales? How do we increase revenue? And so um, what I'd like to do is focus in on that for a minute. So the real thing is what, what business issues uh, are we going to talk about today? And so the areas we're going to talk about is if you're a company that has less desirable sales performance than you'd like, from sources like inside sales, maybe a field sales people, you have direct field sales people, or even sales through other channels. We're going to talk about how you can improve that. Also, if marketing and sales are not working uh, collaboratively together, how can we drive new business from existing and potential customers? We'll also cover off uh, um, you know, limited management and executive visibility to what's really happening in the field. We're going to talk a little bit about that, mainly focused on uh, marketing automation aspect of that. And so that's the third one. And the last one is enabling all field sales, service, and support channels. So we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end, okay? So really high level, um, all of you have existing customers that you're working with today and potential customers that you'd like to sell more to. And there are things like, sales activities and marketing activity that are happening today that you're doing on the existing customers. But it really is important to do that to drive new business from potential customers, obviously. Okay? So for most companies, you'll wonder, are the field sales activities producing the adequate results your company is looking for? And most companies that I speak to, the answer to that is no. Right? Maybe they are doing well in sales, but they could do better. Or maybe they're not doing well in sales and they want to do better. So um, that's what we're talking about today. The interesting thing, what sits in the middle between uh, winning business from existing customers and, uh, and landing new ones is all of this information that we have access to. So uh, there's field sales activity that's happening every day. There's marketing activity that's happening. There's inside sales activity. There's people visiting your websites. There's people visiting your different social tools like LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and all the various ones that are out there today. Uh, and then you have information about existing customers sitting in your current data basic systems. You have information in your financial system about what customers are buying, how they're paying, and uh, you have cu customer support information. So all of these different points of data are, um, are pieces to the puzzle that make your sales process more effective and it really is important to harness them all. So the way you harness all this information really is at the center, your CRM. Your CRM has the capability to be sort of the front end of your sales effectiveness strategy. Second to that is the information you have, the, what we call the smart data. So information about your existing clients and information about your potential clients that you're trying to land. Then the third and the final component really is marketing automation. So being able to um, 
set it and forget it almost to drive new business uh, to your company. And this is where we're going to focus today on the yellow box, the marketing automation. We're not going to talk deeply about CRM, and we're not going to talk deeply about smart data today. Those are other sessions that we do. So the fact that we're focusing on marketing automation, we're going to cover off things like email marketing, web tracking, lead scoring, social discovery, nurture marketing, and a bunch of other things. And we're going to get pretty deep into that today. So at the end of the day, when you look at this model, it's you have a CRM. You're using your CRM to manage sales, marketing, customer support, most likely. There's data you have that's already in CRM. There's data that lies outside of your CRM you can use to accomplish your, um, your, um, your sales growth goals. And then there's marketing automation that can help it all happen. So I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to jump over to Jessie and let her introduce herself once I unmute her. <laughs> And, uh, and we'll get started with the marketing automation presentation. So hi, Jesse. Hi, Rob. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Jesse Granlin, Partner Account Manager at Click Dimensions, and I'm pleased to be able to show you Click Dimensions today. Um, can you guys see my screen OK? I just switched it over now. All right. So I'm going to start out reviewing just a couple of slides. We'll talk about the Click Dimension solution from a high level so you have a good understanding conceptually of what its capabilities are. And then we'll just dive into the live environment for the majority of our time today. Um, you can see my screen, Rob? Yes. OK, great. So first and foremost, Click Dimensions is an email marketing and marketing automation solution built exclusively for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, we don't actually work on any other platform um, and you can use it to perform end-to-end -end marketing tactics. So we give you all this functionality listed right here right inside the UI of Microsoft Dynamics CRM allowing you to measure the results of your campaigns, help you to eliminate redundant and manual processes, ultimately helping you make better business decisions because you have better data and really you know, providing your team a better way to manage your return on investment. And what's great about this is you're not having to go outside of CRM to do things like creating your email campaigns, tracking your web visits, building web content like landing pages, web forms, and surveys. You can do things like build multi-touch drip marketing campaigns. We have a lead scoring component, and Click Dimensions will really enable your sales teams to have better data to act on, connecting to their prospects, um, even through social networks. So what we do really well here is help to bridge the gap between your marketing activities and your sales results. So this is a scenario that we hear all the time from marketers, people that are using using something like Microsoft Dynamics CRM to manage their customer accounts, their marketing list, their contact records, using something completely different for email. Um, sometimes you'll see there's a small integration point, but the integration is not fully native like we are. Um, a lot of folks are using something different for forms, a different tool for surveys, for analytics, and even for social, and nothing talks to one another. So what we do with Click Dimensions is we bring all that data and all that functionality into one central place that sits right inside of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So architecturally, we're built on Windows Azure. We connect to the websites through tracking scripts. We connect to the recipients' inboxes. And then any of that data that's coming back to us, all of your web analytics, your email statistics, instead of holding it up in the cloud, this is being pushed um, right back into your email or right back into your uh, CRM database. So what this means is that you can use all of the native features that you've already invested in in CRM, like workflow and reporting and querying and dashboarding to get this data to do whatever you ask it to do. You're not in a situation where it's inaccessible by being in another database. So last slide before I move into the demo environment. Um, from an email marketing standpoint, all creation and sending is coming from inside CRM but Click Dimensions will handle the sending of the emails through our servers. So on the back end, we're going to track deliverability, sender authentication. Um, you don't have to worry about being blacklisted. Um, you know, we take that all on being your email service provider. And another great feature with our tool, marketers can actually associate the appropriate domain so all the emails are branded completely and 100% to your organization. So you'd essentially set up a C name um, so that it points to your domain um, even even though we're sending from ours. So I will jump right into the live environment here and show you where Click Dimension sits in the UI of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So first thing I like to show is where Click Dimensions is located. Um, 
here you can see um, under the marketing tab we have analytics. We have an analytics section and an email marketing section. I'm doing a demo today from our production environment, CRM Online, uh, but this works with 4.0 2011 uh, partner hosted um, on premise. So um, under analytics here, you're going to see all of your web traffic coming in here in real time. So you're going to see companies that are visiting your site. You're going to see every visit um, right down to how long they were on a particular page. And I like to cover off in the analytics in part two of the conversation and really start with the email piece because it's the biggest piece of the Click Dimensions pie. So from an email marketing perspective, you can send out individual emails, bulk emails, and emails through workflow using CRM and Click Dimensions. Um, we have many different editors for you to choose from. Um, three right now and one coming up, a new drag and drop editor that's coming in our September release. But this is where all your editors are going to be stored and saved to create a new email. You just hit new choose the editor you'd like to start with. We have a block editor, freestyle, and custom HTML. Um, and you can accomplish the same thing with all the editors, um, just in a different way. So whatever you're more comfortable with. I'll show you the block editor first. This is our most popular editor. It's very easy to create an email very quickly and make it look nice. Um, you know, you don't necessarily start with a layout. You basically just build your email block by block. So when you want to add content, you'll insert your blocks to the right, to the left, above, or below. Continue to add your blocks, add your content um, just by right-clicking. This brings you to a spot where you can add text. You can add your image. Brings you to an image manager. You can upload and save as many images as you want on here. Bring them into the email. Um, you can come up to container and change your block spacing, your background color, your border. You can now do social sharing. So if you want to add social icons to your emails for people to click on that icon and share with their social communities, um, that's now available with Click Dimension. So you can put in icons for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+. You can rearrange the icons as you want, insert them into your email. Um, that's what this looks like. So this someone clicks on this icon, shares it with their social community. I'll show you a little bit later where you can see a little news feed report of that. So this is our block editor. You don't need any HTML experience whatsoever to create an email using that environment. Um, we also have this WYSIWYG designer. This is our freestyle editor. And you can see here, this is where you would kind of start with your layout. Most people are familiar with this type of editor. Um, we have many different layouts for you to choose from and bring into your email. Um, but if you have a template, an HTML template that you are used to, it fits your brand, you can upload this into the layout manager and begin using whatever you're comfortable with. So what's great about this is that you know, someone who has HTML experience can bounce from the HTML view to the design mode, work in both, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, another thing you can do with all the editors, and one of the huge benefits of having this in CRM is that you can drop in attributes from a lead contact and account record into your emails. So in any of these drop down boxes, I can scroll down, pull in, you know, maybe just the first name. This is going to bring in every attribute under these records. So if I just simply wanted to write Dear John into the email, now this email, um, when you send it out, will render dynamically based on, um, you know, and stick the first name of everyone in your marketing list right into that email. So um, that's how you put personalization into the email. This is all your editing options, you can add links to surveys, add links to landing pages, put your social sharing in there, um, copy from Word, um, everything you're used to from the WYSIWYG designer. So this is our number two editor, um, the freestyle. And then our third editor um, is really geared for people who are very familiar with HTML, HTML gurus, or people who like to have something created in an outside program and just want to drop in the raw code. So this is purely a HTML code environment. You can go in between the HTML and the preview mode. Um, really something for every kind of marketer. So those are the three editors that we have. I'm going to jump into PowerPoint really quick and show you one last way to send emails using Click Dimensions, and that's using a tool called Outlookcast. So Outlookcast gives you a way to send a very personal looking email without going in and using one of our editors and through the Click Dimensions service. So you just open up an Outlook email like you normally would. Start typing away in your email. You can put your links. You can see this is personalized with dynamic content again. Um, so the way you'd send this is you'd go into your marketing list in CRM, 
we add this Outlook Cast button on the ribbon of all your marketing lists. And once you hit Outlook Cast, you get this URL here. It's a unique URL that represents every person in your marketing list. So once you put that back into your email and send it out, even though you're hitting send from Outlook, it's going through the Click Dimension servers, so you're going to be able to see how many people it was delivered to, how many people clicked on the links you had in there, all the tracking that you normally would sending out an email with Click Dimensions. But the real benefit here is this looks like a very personal, one-to-one -one looking email. You're not putting any rich content or images in it. Um, you tend to have a higher open rate with these kind of emails and you tend to get a lot of personal responses back. So those are the four ways of creating emails with click dimensions. Um, one feature that you can use with all the editors is inbox preview. So this is great if you want to see how your your content renders on different platforms and mobile devices. So this is what it would look like on an iPhone. You can see what it looks like on an iPad, different versions of Outlook. Um, just kind of helps you along with the design. This can be a really big time saver for marketers. So I'm going to jump back into the live environment here and talk about the email send record. So for every email that you create with Click Dimensions, you'll need to fill out an email send record. This is where you're going to state who the email is going to, who it's coming from, um, all those more administrative things on the email. Um, but also where you're going to see after you send the email out, um, statistics on deliveries, opens, unique opens, clicks on subscribes and bounces. So if I click into any of these records here, these are our newsletter sends. Um, you can see this is where you're going to enter your recipients any combination of your leads, your contacts, your accounts, your marketing lists in CRM, and those marketing lists can be either dynamic or static. You can choose to send this right away, queue it up to send it on a later date. You can say, I want this to come from the record owner in CRM, and this will change dynamically based on the person that owns them um, in the CRM database, the person who's attached to them. Um, you can say, I want this to come from any general alias if you'd like, or it can come from the user creating the email. Um, you can attach all of this content to a Microsoft Dynamics CRM campaign. Um, so if you have campaigns that have email sends, they have landing pages, surveys, forms, all tied to one campaign, what this does is it allows you to um, tie everything together so you can put the all-up campaign results into dashboards and reports. So that's our campaign tracking, um, and this is where you'd actually attach the email template. So this email send record is not only where you'd send the properties, like I mentioned before, it's where after the fact you can come in to get these email statistics. So this is our November newsletter send and the overall performance of the email and how that looks. So total interactions with the email, bounce rates, unsubscribe rates, unique clicks, deliverability scores. Um, and then if you put social icons into the email, you can see how people are sharing on their respective social communities. So six people shared by Facebook, one person shared this article, um, the newsletter with Twitter, and so on. So if I scroll down, this gives me every person in my database who interacted with their social networks, and I can see the icons over here. So on the top, I can also see the statistics in a heat map. And this just shows an overlay of statistics on how the content is trending. So um, the way you'd read this is 9.68% of overall clicks were here on this article, 6.63% here. Just gives you a nice overlay of statistics. So um, you can also perform split testing on emails. Um, and the idea with split testing is you want to test two different versions of an email with a small sample size, see which version will give you the best results. So you'll keep strategy A as you've already created it, and you can change something small in strategy B, um, or you can test entirely different templates. So we'll say happy holidays on version B, and we'll just keep strategy A, click dimensions November newsletter. You can change who it's coming from, um, who it appears to be coming from. You can change entirely different templates. We'll just change the subject line. Um, then it brings you to the email as it appears visually, and you can change any last, you know, maybe you want to change the background color to blue instead of orange on strategy B, or you want to swap out an article, um, see which one gives you the best um, results, best open rates or click rates. Um, then I'm going to hit next after you've made your changes to the email. And then it brings you to a bar here that represents 100% of the marketing list. So in this marketing list, we have just over 4,700 people. You can drag and drop to randomly select your sample size. So let's send 10% of the marketing list version A, 10% version B, and then after four hours or a select amount of time, um, whatever version is the winning version, 
and you get to pick what the winning strategy is, whether that's unique click rate or unique open rate, that winning version will automatically be sent to the remaining 80% of your marketing list once you hit send and save. So this all happens automatically. It randomly selects that sample size, um, and all the statistics will come into CRM for you and the winning version will be set. So that's split testing. Um, you also have tools to help you with the content. Um, so this is called Spam Assassin, and when your, your email is in draft, you can hit this spam test, and it will give you a score based on how likely this is to end up in a spam filter, sort of giving you um, tips and cues on what to change so that it has a higher deliverability score. And this is where you actually initiate the sending of the email. So last thing from, a, from the email send record is that you can pull a email click report. And what this does is breaks down your email, shows you all of the links that you have in your email, and by unique clicks and total clicks shows you what the more popular links were. So if I go click on one of these more popular links, I'm going to get a sub report that shows me every lead and contact in my database who interacted with that link. And these people are all connected. So I can go right to someone's contact record um, right from that report. And then if I scroll down, of course, you're going to be able to get the email statistics in aggregate like I just showed you. But these statistics are also coming back into the leading contact record. So here's every email that was ever sent to this person. And I can see how they've interacted with each individual email. So all the email statistics, um, again, not only in aggregate, but pulls right back into the leading contact record. So I'm going to jump out of this email send record here. Um, so finishing up on the email marketing piece, all of your unsubscribes are going to be listed here. Anyone who's unsubscribed from your, communica or from your communication, um, we're going to manage on our end. So if someone unsubscribes, we mark their record. And when Click Dimensions goes to send the email, it will exclude um, sending the communication to anyone who has marked the record as an unsubscribe. Um, so I actually had a specific request to talk about um, the Canadian anti-spam laws and how Click Dimensions can help you be in compliance with those laws. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but um, essentially from an, for a marketer, the key tenant of Canadian anti-spam law is, is the consent requirement. So it prohibits senders from mailing to anyone who has not explicitly requested the mailing and it also requires that you have an unsubscribe method that's clear, easy to access, very prominent. So, um, you know, what can be tricky is that explicit consent, um, it can be obtained in a number of ways. So the first way is for them to actually go in and physically subscribe to your communication. Um, implied consent, which is, you know, someone you've maybe done business with in the last two years, you're allowed to communicate with them. Um, you can legally communicate to someone who's handed your business card at an event. Um, and ask that you communicate with them, so verbal consent. So there's a lot of great information out there, um, but if you have any other questions, feel free to um, connect with me after this meeting and we can have um, a further discussion. Um, but we do give you tools to help you with that, and one of them here is, you know, obviously we're going to give everyone the ability to unsubscribe from your communication. We have a snippet that just drops into your email, um, and anyone who unsubscribes will automatically um, and it will automatically put that block on the record. But to help you build subscription-based marketing services, which is what, is what marketing communication is all about these days, um, we give you the ability to set up a subscription management center. So what you'll do using Click Dimensions is you'll decide the kind of communication that you want to send out regularly, build preferences, and allow people to opt into the types of communication that you're sending. So I clicked um, on this link to the profile right from an email that was sent to me. So you can see it recognized what I had already subscribed to, but I can make any changes. Um, so if I want to update or if I want to hear about newsletters, um, if I want to get the Click Dimensions newsletters, but I don't want to hear about the special events and product updates, I can do that. I submit my preferences, and what will happen then um, on the back end is this will map to marketing lists that you've created using Click well, um, Marketing lists are, that's an out-of-the-box native CRM feature, but you send to marketing lists. So um, you map these preferences to marketing lists, and then every time you go to send that regular communication, you'll always have the most up-to-date and relevant subscribers. So this will help you be in compliance with Canadian anti-spam. Um, so 
that is subscription preferences. And one last topic that I want to talk about um, is nurture marketing. So using click dimensions, um, you have the ability to create um, drip marketing campaigns using our nurture builder. So I'll build one of these out so you can see how quickly and um, easily you can actually create one of these without having to create workflows in CRM. So I always like to give the example of trade shows. So you come back from a trade show and maybe you have 200 people that gave you their card, asked you to start communicating with them. Well, instead of following up one by one, you can stick these people in a nurture campaign. So you build this out by dragging and dropping into the um, tree environment. So Email number one will be sent to this person. Thanks for stopping by at the conference. Here's some more information on our business. So then we can put a wait condition in there and say, maybe after two weeks or five days, whatever is appropriate, um, how is this person interacting with the communication? Have they clicked on the link that we wanted them to? Then it's going to drop into yes or no's. So if yes, you can do a number of these actions. Maybe you want to assign it to someone. You can notify a team or an individual. Um, you can add this person to a marketing list. If not, after those two weeks have come by, we don't have any interaction um, with the email that we sent out, let's send email number two to try to catch their attention in a different way. Then we can stick another wait condition in there and say, have they even opened the email? Um, and then it's going to drop into yes or no's again. So once you associate this nurture with a marketing list, these people get brought in from step one, and they're essentially an autopilot. So you might have 200 people all within this nurture that are at different phases depending on how they're clicking through. The idea is really just set it and forget it. So that's nurture. Um, one last thing in regards to nurture is that right on a contact record, I'm just going to pull mine up here um, because I have myself in a nurture so I could demonstrate this. Um, under nurture programs, right in a contact record, you're going to be able to pull any individual um, who's in a nurture and a timeline of how they interacted with that nurture. So the way you'd read this is um, email number one was sent to me in this nurture February 20th. Then we waited five days, prospect didn't click. So email number two was sent. And these are actually direct access to the template that was sent to me. Waited five days, email number three was sent. So let's um, scroll down to the bottom here. The way that this nurture ends is email, last email was sent within the nurture, then we waited five days, the prospect didn't click, so the user was notified that this is a no responder, and I was added to a new marketing list of no responders, and you can eventually put these people in a slower drip campaign, target them differently, manage them however you want. So another thing you can do with nurture is you can, um, put someone into a nurture on an individual basis. So on all of your leading contact records, you're going to have this run nurture button on the ribbon. So once I hit run nurture, this is going to bring up all of the active nurture campaigns um, that you have up and running and publish. So I can just grab any of these nurture campaigns, hit run, and when I hit OK, this person will be sent email number one within the nurture and they'll go through the motions. So, you know, what's great about this from a sales perspective is, you know, you can send these nurture emails out and have them look very personal, maybe using something like Outlook has to create the emails. So it looks like a one-to-one -one email, and if someone replies back to an email that was sent through a nurture, it's going to go to the record owner who it was sent from. Um, so we use this, you know, as a sales organization all the time. It's very beneficial for me for a salesperson to be able to do more with less. I can be nurturing and touching more of my prospects and my customers without having to actually do the work. I basically just get the communication when they're ready to respond to me. So that is nurture. Um, so let's sort of steer the conversation away from um, email marketing and talk a little bit about web analytics. So with Click Dimensions, um, we have a full web tracking platform. And anything that you have the Click Dimensions tracking script on, every page on your website, um, that page view, all the visit information will be pulled into CRM for you. So this is how it works. When someone visits your website for the first time, we're going to store them under an anonymous visitor record. So what we do with that, what that um, tracking script will do is activate a cookie in their browser, and it will track the company name, geographically where they're coming in from. It'll track their whole visits every single page view that they had, but we just don't know a whole lot about this person. They're still anonymous. 
So what we do, um, they, once this person in, uh, identifies themselves, and, and they can do that two ways. The first way is by filling out a form on your website, giving us their information. And way number two is by clicking on a, an email sent from Click Dimensions. So once they do one of those two things, we know exactly who they are. So Click Dimensions will automatically convert them to a lead or contact, delete the anonymous visitor record, and then push all the old browsing history right into the new leader contact so nothing is ever lost. You have that full 360 degree view of everything this person did even before they told us who they were. We pull all that anonymous browsing history right back in. And this is going to be um, in two different places. So if I go back to the marketing section here under analytics, I'm going to see all of the visits coming in in real time right here. So um, businesses that are coming to your site. Here's the IP organization. I can see if these people are leads and contacts in CRM. I can see where they're coming from, what the referring host is, keywords that they're typing in, um, how long they were on the site on the visit, and this is in seconds. I can see the lead score they accumulated on each visit. I can see how many pages they looked at. Um, and these are even, you know, this is time, so I'm showing this is our production site, um, and I can see even people that are visiting right at this second. So because this is in CRM, and why this is extra powerful for a sales organization is that you have the ability to set your own custom views to see the information however you want. So as a salesperson, I don't need to see every visit coming in to the website, but I do want to see just my contacts who have visited in the last month. So here's every prospect, every customer, every partner that I work with who's visiting our site, and I can, I can see exactly when I uh, drill into a visit here, see even down to the page what they're looking at. We store all these anonymous visitors separately. So this is everyone who has not yet identified themselves with us. Um, we create this record, uh, track all the pages they viewed, assign lead scores to them, and when these visitors identify themselves through filling out a form or clicking on an email, we check first to see if there's already a leader contact in, in your CRM database with their email address. If yes, we'll send the information to that record. If not, Click Dimensions will create a new leader contact record for you with the submitted information, and this is deleted. So I want to back up for just a second and talk about lead scoring. So every leading contact as they interact with your emails and the website, they're going to accumulate a lead score. So um, this is what the default scoring method looks like. Um, you can change this however you'd like. Um, by default, our highest score is someone who submits a form, but this can change. Um, every user gets a unique tracking script, this is where you'd find that, but if you want to score certain pages higher than others, you can certainly do that by putting a parameter in the tracking script. So you can really customize that to your liking. Um, but that's really the analytics um, from the aggregate view, but I also wanted to show you that you can actually see, um, you can see those analytics right into a leading contact record as well. So let's open this record back up. If I want to see an individual's interactions with our websites, um, I can do that just by going to their contact record. This guy in particular has um, a few visits with us. He's got about seven visits with us. If I scroll over, I can see how long he was on our site for each visit, his lead score from each visit, total pages, and then when I click into any of these, I can see more detail. So this is where I can see where he came from. I can see he typed in click dimensions in a Google search to get to us. I can see that he came in through our home page. He left looking at our tour site. Um, on this particular visit, he looked at nine pages. And if I go to page views, I can see every single page that he spent time on and how long he was on each page. So what's great about this, you know, especially for me from a sales perspective, I can typically tell before I even connect with someone on a demo exactly what they want to look at um, if they've been on our website. So um, that wraps up the analytics conversation. Rob, did you want to um, check for questions at this point? Yeah, we've got one question in here. Um, so the question is, can you run and view results of nurture programs on a large scale instead of individually? You can. Um, we don't have an out-of-the-box nurture reporting tool, but when you send out emails through Nurture, um, 
you can see under the email marketing section all of the statistics. So um, I'll show you even a report that's, that I run on all my customers who are using Nurture. You know, the idea is really, um, you know, all of this, this information, all of this data is in CRM, so you can create your own reports for how you need to see the data. Um, but here's an example of how I did that. I, I have a number of my prospects that are on a Nurture right now, so I just created my own view, my own report to see everyone in my Nurture and their interactions with the emails. And of course, the way our Nurture is set up, when someone clicks on a link, um, to see information, maybe they took the tour or something like that. I can come in and look at this view, um, but I also get um, workflow emails sent to me saying, this prospect of yours who's in the nurture just interacted with your emails. They looked at these links. You need to be in touch with them. So yes, you can create those reports. Okay. So there is one other question about cost, but I think I'll save that to the end only because I'd like to go through a few more of the features first, and then we'll we'll sure. go over the cost at the end. Is that okay, Jesse? That sounds perfect. Okay, great, thanks. All right, so let's talk. Um, actually, I want to show you social discovery, and then we'll go into web content. So social discovery is um, one of our newest features. It just came out last week, and this is part of our standard offering. And what it does is we partner with a company called Full Contact. And what Full Contact does is with just an email, um, all you need is an email, and then you have the ability to see a full social profile of any of your leads and contacts in your CRM database. Um, and what Click Dimensions will do then is crawl out to the web and pull in as much social data as we can find, giving you direct access to all these different social networks. So this is our CEO, John Gravely. Um, he has, so Full Contact found that he had a Twitter account, a Facebook account, Clout, Gravatar, and LinkedIn, and I can go directly to any of these social networks, his individual social networks, just by clicking on that icon. So you can see here it pulls in a little work experience. Um, this is where you'd find that lead score, and it even pulls in some photos from each network. So that's our social discovery. And let's go and talk about web content. So with Click Dimensions, you can build landing pages, forms, and surveys. So we'll start with landing pages. And landing pages are really designed to give your visitors more information on a very specific topic and inviting them to take a call to action. So you can create landing pages using the same editors that you would use to create emails. So if you're comfortable creating emails, it's very easy for you to come in and then create a landing page. So if I go into the designer here, um, once this loads, this is a landing page we've created asking people to download some of our online content. You can see here it's built with a block editor. You just insert your blocks like I showed you earlier to add your content. And um, we've embedded a form. So we track these landing pages like any other page. We're going to show you who's visiting the landing pages, who's converting by filling out one of the forms, um, and then we're going to track all the form visits into CRM, which I'll show you in just a minute, um, are the form inquiries. So the way you'd actually embed these landing pages, um, you have two options. So here's a, a link that you can, um, people can access your landing page through a link. Maybe you want to put it in an email or you want to share it out um, with a social network. These links are going to be branded to you. So this files.click dimensions that you'll see in the URL of the landing page, even though we host them, once you set up your CNames, these links will be 100% branded to you. Click dimensions won't be present. And then the other way is you can embed it with an iframe. So if you want to add this as a separate page on your website, you can do that as well. So that's landing pages, very easy to do. Um, and then forms and surveys. So I'll just kind of show you our contact us form here. So you have the ability to create forms and surveys, and I group forms and surveys together because it's the same experience. This is where you'd come in to begin creating your forms. Um, you choose whether this is a form or survey on this drop down. You decide whether anyone who comes in and fills out a form on your website who isn't already a leader contact in your database will come in as, um, you can choose whether that's going to be a new lead or a contact in CRM. This is where you'd attach an autoresponder email template saying thank you for your inquiry or whatever that may be. And then if I go into the designer, it's a drag and drop interface. You have all of your form fields over here and you just drag and drop the form fields in to create your form. 
So all of your form fields, things like first name, last name, birthday, whatever you want to stick in your form will be there. And then you also have these different form components. So if you want to put a section title, lines, multiple pages in your forms, your own HTML, you can do that. Um, again, you just drag and drop them in. Oh, drag and drop them in. Um, and let me give you a preview so that you can have a sense of what this looks like. And what I'm showing you right now is actually, um, this is our contact us form. Um, this is what you saw in Click Dimensions, and it's just embedded on our website. So anytime someone comes in and fills out this form, I'm just going to fill it out really quickly. And feel free to do this um, on your end as well. So I can show you where this tracks back to, just any of the forms on our website. So I'm going to get rid of that for just a minute. So this is form in the preview mode. Um, now, what's great about having these forms uh, created with Click Dimensions is that you can set post actions. So instead of going in and creating a CRM workflow to build your processes, you can actually drag and drop um, to add someone to a marketing list or to set a follow-up task or a follow-up phone call. Notify a team. You can use any of these actions here, any of these post actions, and just drag and drop in so that you can create these processes around the forms. Um, and then when you're ready to embed these forms into your website, you have an iframe code or a widget code, um, and you can also um, send this link to someone to fill out the form as well. So I filled out that contact us form. And just to show you where that data comes in, I'm going to go back under the analytics section under posted forms. If I click onto that contact us, here's the form that I just filled out. It's coming back into CRM for me in real time. So last topic is going to be surveys. So I won't spend too much time on this because um, I showed you forms and um, it's really a very similar process. So this is a form or a survey that we've um, developed for onboarding. And you can see here it's the same setup process. It's just um, drop down to survey instead of forms. Um, you can clone these surveys and then when I go into the designer, the only real difference here is that you have your survey questions instead of your form fields. So when you want to add your questions in, you just do the drag and drop. You have the same form component, so if you wanted to put CAPTCHA in there, um, you want to put a page break, that's perfectly fine. Um, I like to show this survey because it has um, our own HTML and branding in it. It has uh, multiple pages. It has every kind of question that you could need in the survey. So, and you can also implement skip logic. So people can skip questions or entire pages of questions based on their responses. So here's an example. This is the first page of our survey. We have an image in there, uh, multiple pages, um, different image on page number two. It has multi-select questions. You have the star rating questions, yes or no, text box. Um, uh, third image here, and that's what our survey looks like. So the way that you'd embed these is that, you know, you have this link here where people can access this through email. Most people like to send their surveys by email. Um, but you also have your iframe and your widget code if you want to put this on your website. So you can set the same post actions with these surveys. So again, someone completes the surveys. Um, our chief customer officer is notified because he's the one who manages this team. But you can have the different post actions set up. So if you want to have a follow-up set up or put these people in a marketing list, assign it to someone, you can set those same post actions that you can with forms. And then one last thing with surveys is that, and you can do this with forms as well, you can set a confirmation text. So this is what shows up in the body of your web page when, you know, basically confirming that this went through successfully. So you have full HTML um, design experience here. Here are your WYSIWYG design tools. Um, this is what someone sees when they actually fill out the form. Um, if you'd rather not, you can actually just put them to a post redirect, and that's perfectly fine as well. And that is surveys. Um, we also have a go-to webinar integration um, that I don't know that I have a whole lot of time to go through, but essentially you're going to be able to connect your go-to webinar account to CRM and Click Dimensions if you're using go-to webinar for your events. And as soon as you register the two, all of your events are going to show up here. So you can see people who have registered. If I go to past events, I can see all the events that have already happened. I can see how long the session was, 
what number of regist registrants versus how many actually attended. Um, and then I can even see down to the event participation level. Um, everyone who's been participating in my events, I can see um, if these people posted any questions, how long those people were in the sessions. Um, and then, of course, this goes and ties right back to uh, the leading contact record. So um, I always like to show people it's very easy for you to build a query of people who registered and missed. So you can put these people into marketing lists and you can target them um, a different way. Um, you know, really all of this, you know, all of this data is brought back into CRM for you to really do whatever you want with it. Like I mentioned earlier, you're, you're not in a situation where any of this data isn't accessible because it's in another database. So um, I think I've hit on about every Click Dimensions feature from at least a high level. Um, I just have um, one last slide here that I always think is very important. Uh, Click Dimensions really tries to be a thought leader for marketing with Microsoft Dynamics CRM and we're constantly providing assets for our customers and people who aren't our customers to give them tics, uh, tips and tricks. So we have our marketing with Microsoft CRM Idea eBook, um, our ROI Quick Guide for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. We have some awesome blogs, um, lots of premium content, so feel free to check that out. Um, welcome you to take a look at any time. So I think I'll turn it back to Rob and can open it up for Q&A. Great. That's great, Jesse. Thank you. Um, the one question here before we get to cost is uh, we use constant contact. How is Click Dimensions different? That's a loaded question. So Click Dimensions, um, you know, comparing the two, it's, it's really like um, comparing apples to oranges. So um, Click Dimensions is really a full marketing automation platform and constant contact is is basically just an email marketing service. So um, we really give you so much more. We, the landing pages, the forms integration, the survey integration, social discovery, all of that wrapped into one solution. Um, but then a big piece of it, the biggest piece is the integration. Everything that we bring in is pulled into CRM so that you can set workflows on it. You have access right from the leading contact record and you're not going to get that visibility uh, by using something like Constant Contact. Great. And then the other one is around cost. So let's go through the, the package tiers. Um, so our pricing is listed right on our website, clickdimensions.com slash pricing. And all of the packages are based on annual email volume. So most people start at the standard level or above because this is where a full feature set is going to be. You see all the boxes are checked here. You have everything that we can offer. Um, at the standard level, you have 180,000 emails a year. This is an all-inclusive pricing, so this is unlimited users with the solution, all of your support, all of your training, um, and everything is wrapped up. So it's designed to be an all-inclusive pricing model. So the only other restriction other than that email volume is that you have five active nurtures at the standard level that you can run at the same time. So you can have many nurtures created and unpublished and ready to go, um, but only five running at the same time. So the only difference between your standard level professional and going upwards is that your email volume is going to increase along with the price and then your active nurture campaigns that you can have running also increase. Um, we have a starter package, our base level. The price is a little bit lower. You have 60,000 emails a year. Um, it gives you basically access to all of your email functionality and web analytics, but you don't have those premium features like subscription management, which is going to be extremely important. Um, or the Canadian anti-spam law. Um, you, have, you don't have SMS, landing pages, surveys, go-to webinar integration or nurture. And then we have an email only package, um, which you have 60,000 emails a year and access to every email feature that we have. And then you can pay, so there are two options. Um, you can either pay for your subscription on a quarterly billing basis, or if you want to pay for the annual subscription up front, you get a 10% discount. That's great. Okay, thanks, Jesse. That's awesome. I'm going to go back to the one slide that I was showing just so that I can bring this home to what all this means. So let me just go back to the slides. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Yes, I can see it.
Okay, so so back to this box. I think this is where it all comes together. So most of you on the phone already have Dynamics, or you're looking at buying Dynamics over some other CRM. So the CRM is really going to give you the list of companies and contacts and opportunities and all those good things that CRMs do. And most of you are having salespeople do physical calls or even maybe telephone internal calls to your existing customers to try to upsell them or cross-sell them. And you're also having your salespeople uh, go out to potential new customers. Sometimes what we find is most companies put way too much focus on having the salesperson do a lot of prospecting themselves. So they're the ones that are nurturing and trying to get a, uh, a new customer to become a paying client. And it can be a long road to get a client from not knowing who you are to becoming a paying customer. And to have your highly paid salesperson be the key resource doing that is probably one of the most inefficient ways of selling. So when you combine data, so information about the existing customers, or sorry, about the potential and existing customers, data, data such as um, information you have about them in your existing databases, so what, what, per, what products or services have they purchased from you already, and what products and services make sense to offer them based on what they already own from you. Okay, so you've got that data sitting in your systems. Now it's a matter of combining the, the, that existing information with a structured marketing campaign, and you can have things like the nurture program run. So once you identify which customers have what products and what should they be buying from you, you can create the marketing uh, creative piece and use a nurture campaign potentially to introduce them to the new uh, pricing, new promotion, new products, and that can happen in the background. Once someone clicks on one of those links, you can, have a, you can have an action where a salesperson gets notified and it creates a task in their CRM. So that task automatically pops up and says, hey, Bob Smith clicked on the link for the new promotion to upsell to this new product or service. Uh, give him a call. And then the manager can have a dashboard that shows all of the tasks that have come through. Has the sales rep followed up in, the ti in a timely fashion based on your sales process? Okay, so this is how an example of how to bring these three things together so that you can increase sales. Now the salesperson is only focusing on the, the most highly qualified opportunities versus being, the one, versus being the one to have to do everything. Okay, so when you look at email marketing, that is one way of using email marketing to help you grow sales. The other way to use it is you've got potential customers that are today landing on your website. So with web tracking, you can start to track all of that activity. So you're probably spending money with Google, with Google AdWords. You've probably hired a web designer to design your website to have some great content. Hopefully you have different opportunities on your website for people to engage you other than just a phone number or an email address. And so what Click Dimensions does is it gives you tools to explode that opportunity. So people coming to your website can now become um, active prospects in your sales cycle. And once they let us know who they are, that can also create a task for a salesperson to do something about it. So there's so many ways of harnessing these three points on this slide. And the, um, the marketing automation brought to you by Click Dimensions is one of the key tools to making it all come together. Okay, so I'm going to check one more time to see if we have any more um, questions. And I don't see any. Let me see. I don't think so. No. Oh, there's one more. Okay. Is there a minimum term for the subscription? So the subscriptions are, are all based on, um, they're all annual subscriptions. Um, but we have flexible contracts, um, and we allow you to cancel with just a 30-day notice. Not that that would happen, um, because I know that everyone in this call would love the solution, uh, but it's just sort of a peace of mind. Um, so they're all annual subscriptions, even if you pay quarterly, uh, but you do have that option of canceling in 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that was the last question there. One more point I want to bring up. Let me go back to the slide again. I don't know if you realize, I love the slide. <laughs> Uh, so this slide to me is everything on one page. Th this is this is sales effectiveness right in front of you. So for all of you on the phone, if you are on the line, if you have CRM now, you, this is the model that you want to build. You want to have, even if you don't buy it from us or whatever, this is the model you want. You want 
the CRM structured properly. You want data about existing potential clients inside your CRM so you can start doing uh, marketing campaigns on them using the, the Dynamics marketing tools. And you want some way of doing automated marketing for them. Email marketing, web tracking, lead scoring, nurture marketing. You need a tool to do that. <clears throat> Why we think these are the three best pieces. Number one, we think Dynamics is the strongest platform for CRM. It's continually growing and increasing its market share and outpacing any other competitor, including Salesforce lately. Okay, so it's growing very fast. It's doing well. Smart data, um, we use a company called InsideView. InsideView brings a lot of this data in. But we also integrate into your back office systems to pull existing information from your databases into CRM so we can do structured sales campaigns. And then, we've, believe me, we've done an exhaustive review of marketing automation tools and we, we believe Click Dimensions is absolutely the number one and continually modifying and adding new things. In fact, there's a new release. I think there's a webinar on right now, isn't there, Jesse? <laughs> Regarding yeah, the new release. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I missed it because it was at one o'clock. So, they're always updating it. And the beauty is this yellow box lives inside your CRM. So all of these capabilities are native inside your CRM. So what that means is you never need to leave your CRM to, to, uh, to perform these functions. And what's better, a lot of the robust tools in Dynamics like graphing and charting, you can graph and chart the outcome of a lot of these things. Okay. So we've, uh, we've put these three things together to help customers grow sales. If you have any questions at all or if, of how you can take advantage of, of one or all three of these boxes here, uh, reach out to the salesperson that invited you to the event today. So it would either be myself, uh, Randy, or uh, Mike. So reach out to them and we'd be happy to schedule a, even a quick conversation to see what's most important for you. Okay, let me double check one more time to see if there's any more questions before we wrap up for the day. And... Nope, that's it. So that was it. So thanks everybody for participating today. Really appreciate your attendance. And again, if you have any questions at all, even if you're just curious about some of these things, just give us a shout, okay? Have a great day. Thanks everyone.